She was wearing those giant goggles with like the nose piece. So the second she slammed into the grate, it pushes the goggles into her face and it is like an explosion of blood. Welcome back. Oh god. Am I gonna become one of those YouTubers who says welcome back? Well, I'm assuming anyone who clicks on a video that's Q&A, you probably have an investment in the person, so welcome back. You've probably seen my videos before. I was originally going to be filming Lost Tapes Part 3 at the end of this month, but unfortunately my computer decided to crap out on me at the worst possible time, so I'm in the middle of upgrading it and I need to record a video that's gonna be easy to edit in the meantime, hence a Q&A. I've gotten several requests to do a video like this, so I figured there wasn't a more appropriate time. So I'm gonna be compiling a bunch of questions from Patreon and from the YouTube community tab post, as well as going over some comments that I commonly see on my channel that didn't make it into the questions for this video. So we're just gonna jump right in. Which How to Train Your Dragon movie or show made you cry the most? Easily the third movie. Easily the third movie. And it wasn't so much that the third movie made me cry because the story was sad. Like, don't get me wrong, it was sad. But it was more so the fact that the franchise was coming to an end that made me cry. I mean, I remember crying myself to sleep like every night for an entire month after I saw that movie. Just because it was like, holy shit, this franchise that's been part of my life for years now is over. Of course, this was before Homecoming was announced, but you get what I mean. To this day, I cannot listen to the music from that movie, or at least like the ending parts, like once there were dragons. Together from afar, forget about it. I burst into tears every single time. <laughs> Aside from the films, are there any TV shows, video games, books, etc., that you absolutely love as much or perhaps more or less as you love How to Train Your Dragon? If so, what would that be? You know, honestly, there really isn't. I enjoy other franchises and shows, don't get me wrong, but in terms of like investing so much of my time and my energy into a certain franchise, it's solely How to Train Your Dragon. I just don't think I have the mental capacity to care about another franchise as much as I care about that one. It encompassed a large majority of my childhood, so that's the best way to put it, I guess. What is it that you are the most passionate about? What inspired that passion and where do you wanna go with it? Bonus, how was your day? Hope it's been good. It has been good, thank you, Fenton. Okay, that is such a good question because I'm actually very passionate about storytelling. Even though I don't really cover it that much on my channel, I am a writer and I do want to publish in the near future. I have always been a storyteller at heart and it's just kind of what I do. I've always been someone who loves making up stories and writing and getting all my ideas out for other people to see, not just in video, Videos, but in other facets as well. And what inspired that passion was really stuff like How to Train Your Dragon, where it's a story that impacted my life so much and got me through some really hard times growing up. And I would just absolutely love to give that same thing to other people. Give them stories and characters to hold on to to help them through difficult times. Because fiction is extremely powerful. I don't care what anyone says. It can get you through the worst of times, okay? The way I see it, people like Dean Deblois and, you know, Cressida Cow the creator of the books. The reason they created what they did is because they cared about people in that way and I want to do the exact same. I'm in the process of writing a book that will hopefully be published and maybe you guys can be my audience for that. We'll see what happens. If you had to choose one franchise to have a crossover with How to Train Your Dragon and you can't say none, what would you pick and why? That's really difficult. Because I'm not a huge crossover person, I never have been, but if I absolutely had to pick one, as the question says, nobody cringe at me, okay? it would probably be Rise of the Guardians. Not because I personally love Hijack or whatever that ship is, but because it is literally the most popular ship crossover ship anyways in the franchise that it just feels right at this point. Being a fan of How to Train Your Dragon, I have seen for years Hiccup and Jack plastered across every social media front I've ever been a part of. So that's just kind of my go-to at this point. In fact, I remember being in high school and talking to another person. Like it was one of those moments in class where you were told to get to know the person sitting next to you or some shit like that. And I remember telling her that I was a big fan of the How to Train Your Dragon franchise and instinctively she said, oh, so you're also part of that thing with Jack Frost? Like she automatically attributed me being a fan of Hiccup and How to Train Your Dragon as me shipping him with Jack Frost. It's fucking insane. So that would be my crossover, I guess. The next few questions are pretty similar. What drove you to liking the How to Train Your Dragon series so much? Who slash what got you to watch your first How to Train Your Dragon movie? And which is your favorite How to Train Your Dragon movie? You know, the circumstances around me liking the franchise really started very normally, I would say. I was 10 years old whenever it came out, so I just went to the theaters to see it with my parents because it was a kid's movie. I remember a lot of 
the appeal was that my dad actually really enjoyed it, which my dad is a boomer by all accounts. He was never the person who would sit down and watch a kid's movie with me. He would always like let me go into the theater by myself and go do his own thing, even when I was really young. It's <laughs> like shit you probably couldn't get away with nowadays. But I remember him really enjoying that movie and so that gave it a whole new appeal to me and kind of made me cling to it. But that aside, I obviously just really love the story and as a kid I became super obsessed with it in the way that kids do. The circumstances around me being a How to Train Your Dragon fan are actually kind of weird because yes, I obsessed over the first movie whenever it actually came out, but then I kind of got away from it for a few years. In fact, I didn't even know that there was a show involved with it until right around the time the second movie came out. And I remember what reignited my love for the series is a few months before the second movie was released. I was in eighth grade, probably around the end of the year, and it was around that time where you don't have a whole lot to do in class, so they would just play movies every now and then. And we ended up watching How to Train Your Dragon, the movie, in one of those classes. And it was the first time I had really seen the movie in years, and I was just really taken aback, like, wow, I remember how much I loved this as a kid, and it's still really good. And then I saw the second movie in theaters and I absolutely love that. And the way that I found out there was even a show attached is because I saw a How to Train Your Dragon crack on YouTube, you know, like those funny montages of edited moments. And I was like, wait a minute, a lot of this footage isn't from the movie and it's lower quality, like what is it from? And that's when I discovered Writers and Defenders of Burke, spent the entire next summer binging that, getting super invested in it and Obviously, I've been hooked ever since. As far as my favorite How to Train Your Dragon movie, I've touched on this before, I'm pretty sure in my season one review of The Nine Realms, but I love all the movies equally just for different reasons. It's kind of like how I love all my pets equally, but for different reasons. I love my dogs because they're loyal and I love my cats because they're fucking hilarious and make me laugh. But at the end of the day, I love all of them equally. Now, if we want to talk about my favorite How to Train Your Dragon property, that's a different story because as I've also stated in the past, I actually prefer the shows to the movies, specifically Race to the Edge. If I had to pick between Race to the Edge and the movies, I would pick Race to the Edge every single time. I absolutely love that show. One, what inspired you to start YouTube? Two, what do you like to do for fun? And three, is your eye getting better? I've always been a fan of YouTube. I've been watching it since I was a little kid. You know, 11, 12 years old, that was really the time that YouTube was becoming super popular, where YouTubers were starting to be seen as celebrities instead of just people on the internet. And it became a huge part of the way I grew up. I mean, I didn't have a lot of friends as a kid. I wasn't super social. So a lot of my attributes and the way I presented myself, like around other people or in public or whatever, were attributes that I got from watching YouTubers. YouTube has always been like my support system in a way, as sad as that sounds, but it's the truth. I've always loved watching movie reviews, especially in the later years of my high school career. So I got really into critiquing film and certain YouTubers who would do that. So I just kind of adopted a similar format to them while adding my own twist to it and talking about movies and shows that I want to talk about. As far as what I like to do for fun, um... <laughs> I'm a very boring person. I mean, honestly, the best night of my summer so far has been me sitting in my room, eating popcorn, getting drunk, and watching Project X for the first time. Pretty sure I made a drunk post about it. But that's my idea of a fun night. I think I actually make an effort to physically see my friends, maybe two or three times a year. I'm an introvert in every sense of the definition. And as far as my eye goes, oh, uh, it's not getting better. It's just kind of stagnant at this point. For those who may be unaware, I was diagnosed with an autoimmune issue earlier this year called multiple evanescent white dot syndrome or MUDES, which a condition that has since caused blind spots and vision distortion in my right eye. So essentially in my left eye, I see normally, but in my right eye, straight lines look kind of wavy. I know it sounds really weird, but it's, my reality now. I've seen two different retina specialists over it and they both tell me that because my vision has not changed at all in the past six months, then it's likely a permanent issue. But the science behind it is, as far as I can grasp, the cones in my right eye were damaged whenever the autoimmune issue was taking place. And once those cells are damaged, there's nothing you can do to fix them. They just remain permanently damaged for the rest of your life. Thankfully, it's only localized to my right eye, so my left eye is completely fine. It gets annoying because I have double vision due to the distortion now, which makes driving annoying, reading annoying, weapons qualification for the military, forget about it. Best case scenario, my brain will just adjust to it over the next few years. I mean, 
it's really up in the air. It's been a process getting used to it and accepting that my vision is just never gonna be at the state that it was before, which was already shitty to be honest. Like I normally wear glasses, but not in my videos because the glare is so bad. We'll see how the situation evolves, but that's where it's at right now. What was your dream career as a kid? My dad is a veterinarian and when I was a little girl, I really, really wanted to be a veterinarian. Today, however, I do not feel that way at all. As much as I absolutely love animals still, I just, am not medically in tuned at all. I suck at biology, I suck at science, I suck at math. I'm more interested in creative things and honestly, I just don't think I have the stomach to be a vet. But as a kid, it was all I wanted to do, so. Take that for what you will. This next question is from the one and only Toby. How are all the animals slash pets, particularly thunder? We need more fashionable cow pictures. Hopefully the dogs don't disrupt too much when you're recording this. They aren't disrupting me today because I finally shut my door for once while recording. Thunder's doing great. And you're right, I do need to post more cow pictures. My Instagram has been mainly cow themed so far. Twins from Race to the Edge or the films? As much as I love the wacky, funny twins from Race to the Edge, I feel like they're kind of infantilized in that show rather than in the movies whenever they actually have some some realm of common sense. Actually, you know what? I take that back. Roughnut and Toughnut in the third movie were absolutely awful. I don't know if it was the writing or whatever, but they... Race to the Edge Twins. <laughs> Race to the Edge Twins, 100%. Favorite scene from any of the movies or perhaps one scene from each, as hard as that is. My instinct is to say all of the scenes where there isn't any dialogue and it's just the characters flying. In the first movie, that would be Romantic Flight. Second movie, that would be Flying with Mother. And third would be the Discovering the Hidden World sequence. At least from a cinematic standpoint. I mean, as the biggest Hickstrid shipper in the world, my go-to would probably be their wedding. But I also really appreciate Stoic Ship from the second movie as a emotionally impactful as that scene was. That's kind of why I like it. It just really felt like the perfect moment for Hiccup to become that mature adult that we've been watching him grow into. I know that was kind of all over the place, but I cannot pick a single scene. In finishing off the Patreon questions, what kind of music do you like? I know everyone kind of gives this answer whenever they're asked this question, but my music taste is all over the place. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I am a huge Taylor Swift fan. I would die on a hill for that woman. I love her. Folklore is my absolute favorite album of all time. And we're about to be in August, so you bet your ass I'm gonna be celebrating. But I'm also a huge fan of the violin as an instrument. And by virtue of that, I love Lindsey Sterling. I actually saw her in concert a few years ago. I love her. And I'm also in the very early stages of becoming a BTS stan. I know there's not a worse time to do that either because they just went on hiatus, but their music's live. I'm not gonna lie, like, <laughs> I'm really getting into it. Little hint for my next video. It's, a, uh, it's gonna involve BTS, just wait. Moving on to the YouTube questions. Will you ever make videos about video games? It would be cool to see you review or play old How to Train Your Dragon games. Also, your videos are great and very entertaining. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Zana. Zana, however you pronounce that, I'm sorry. Um, I'm not opposed to making video game content. I don't play video games that often, but if it was How to Train Your Dragon themed, I might. I actually did attempt to make a video on the Minecraft How to Train Your Dragon DLC that was released last year, but everything went wrong and I ended up having to scrap it. I think I talked about it in my Killing of a Sacred Deer review. But as far as newer content, yeah, I wouldn't be opposed to it. I know there's that weird Nine Realms game that's coming out soon, so we'll see what happens with that. If it's interesting enough, I might make a video on it. I would definitely make videos on the old How to Train Your Dragon games though, like on the Wii or some shit. It would probably be really funny actually. Would you consider altering your style of content going forward for the sake of monetization? Using less footage in reviews, cutting out swearing entirely, or simply covering more recent slash trendier films? I've been surprised how much I'm able to get away with in terms of monetization. When I first entered the YouTube Partner Program earlier this year, I was under the impression that if you swore at all, you were immediately disqualified. And thankfully that isn't really how it's been working. I don't know if I would cut back on those things, just, you know, unless someone told me I had to. Believe it or not, I did try to swear less in my newest Nine Realms review as compared to the first one, where I was just dropping F-bombs like every sentence. I tried to limit myself in the second season, even though I know I didn't in some parts. Fuck Buzzsaw, fuck Sled Bitch, fuck Tom, fuck his mother, fuck Thunder, fuck DreamWorks, and fuck Universal. But as far as covering more recent and trendier films, I just cover films that I have something to say about. You know, I could review every single movie that comes out in theaters, but sometimes I just don't have anything to say about that. If I'm making a review about something, it's because I have something to say about it and I feel like sharing it with you guys. Otherwise, I feel like my content would just get pretty redundant and more than likely drop in quality, but we'll see what happens. What is your least favorite dragon from the mainline How to Train Your Dragon franchise? Least favorite dragon? I don't think I have one. I mean, you say no nine realms here. 
But if I was including the Nine Realms, it would be the Brony Fleshlights every single time. How do you feel about the third movie? I think it was a massive turn away from the overlying message of fight for the change you want to humans are the virus-esque ending. What do you think about the hidden world? I think I've touched on this topic before. The hidden world could have had a really nice ending or at least a really you know, deserving ending, but the execution just didn't work well, if that makes sense. For example, I'm not a huge fan of the ending the franchise the way the books ended because the books and the franchise never had anything to do with each other. If that's the ending that Dean had in mind the entire time, which there's evidence to prove that it was, what they were lacking in that particular ending they could have made up with in terms of a good antagonist and a fitting conclusion. And they kind of dropped the ball on both of those aspects. I've said it a million times, I'll say it again. I hate Grimmel as a villain. I hate him. He's my least favorite villain. I am positive that DreamWorks and Universal were breathing down Dean's neck, trying to get him to do all these different things with the conclusion of the franchise. It was more than likely a huge mess. I know he did the best with what he had, but it could have been done better. How did it feel when the first Nine Realms video absolutely blew up? It was, and still is, very surreal. I think I mentioned this in a community post at some point, but I took off a semester of college to focus on my YouTube channel and other stuff I have going on independently. In January, I had 500 subscribers and I said to myself, if by May, the typical end of what would be my semester, I make it to 10,000 subscribers, I will consider that a success. I knew it was gonna take a miracle for that to happen. And thankfully, I was given a miracle. And by May, I had 15,000 subscribers. You know, it's something that every YouTuber wants to happen and is anticipating, but when it actually does happen, you just have to sit back and stare in awe at what's going on. You know, some people do this for years and never see that level of success, and I feel extremely grateful. I've only been doing YouTube for the past year and a half, so. I'm honored. You know, a part of me is kind of afraid that maybe that was my peak and I'm never gonna see that level of success again, but I try not to think that way and just put my energy into my future projects and continue to make quality content for you guys, so hopefully you're enjoying it. First of all, love the videos and let's arise up and hope the new season of The Nine Realms isn't going to be a train wreck, a complete one at least. And I want to know how did your love for the How to Train Your Dragon franchise manifest? Was it when you saw the movie in theaters? Thank you, C. Opal. I kind of already answered this question, but yes, I absolutely did love the franchise from the very beginning. Kind of fell off of it for a few years, but once the second movie came out, I got into the series. Shortly after that, Race to the Edge came out, so I got very invested in that, and the rest is history. Are there any particular movies slash pieces of media releasing soon that you plan on or want to make a video on? One coming up next week, actually. Not necessarily a movie or a piece of media, but an event that I plan on making a video about. And if you want a hint as to what that's gonna be, just go check out my Twitter. What was your favorite Race to the Edge season and episode? You're asking me to do the impossible here. As I've already stated, I love Race to the Edge, the entire show. Really hard question, but if I had to pinpoint a specific episode or a set of episodes, it would be the final three episodes of season four. And if you've seen the show, you know why. If you wrote a fourth How to Train Your Dragon movie, would you make a prequel or a sequel and what would it be about? This is really difficult because I've kind of already internalized the fact that the franchise is over, Hiccup's story is over, so anything additional to that would feel kind of cheap. But my go-to is actually something that Dean himself said, which is if he were to make another How to Train Your Dragon edition, it would center on Valka's 20 years. And I think that would be a really interesting concept. As much as I don't particularly love Volca as a character, I think it would still be an interesting story. There's a lot of stuff you could explore there, so it would probably be that. In school, did you have a favorite teacher? What class did they teach? Um, I really liked my college screenwriting professor, just because I feel like we were two nerds in a pod. It was really the first time I was exposed to someone who cared about and loved cinema as much as I did. But aside from that, I would also have to say my band director growing up. He was really the first teacher or person in my life ever who taught me about discipline. And as many of you know, I'm in the military now, so those have been some extremely valuable lessons. Could you do a drunk review of the new Thor movie when it comes out? I'm not really a Marvel person. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, the only superhero that I'm really partial to is Spider-Man and you all know how I feel about No Way Home. Aside from that, they just aren't really my thing. Can you please rank all How to Train Your Dragon villains from worst to best? Best? 
Vest. Also of the six main characters from Race to the Edge, who has the most growth? Um, off the top of my head, it's gonna be hard for me to rank all the villains, except for the fact that Grimmel's at the bottom and Vigo's at the top. In between, I don't know, I'm kind of indifferent. Riker was kind of interesting, but only because he was Vigo's brother and that dynamic was cool. Drago, on his own, is not super compelling either, but I feel like he's much better than Grimmel. I don't know if I would even count Dagger because he ends up becoming an ally. Krogan is just kind of passable. Was not a huge fan of the Johan twist either. I know that was all over over the place, but just know Grimmel's at the bottom, Vigo's at the top. You cannot touch Vigo Grimborn. And as far as the six main characters from Race to the Edge who had the most growth, I don't know. I My instinct is to say it's not Lao. At least in terms of growth, I know they kind of dropped the ball with him in movie two and three, but just in terms of his character in Race to the Edge, there's so much evolution going on behind the scenes. I mean, I remember I was watching Chain of Command earlier today and it brought my mind back to Tone Death, which was an episode in season three where he and Hiccup are talking about Heather and, you know, what she sees in a person. And Snot Lao says something to the effect of, I can fake honesty and sincerity. Where Minden is talking to him saying, I've never heard someone speak to me so honestly and sincerely. And it was just such a good callback to show his evolution from just season three to season six. And that's the thing I really love about Race to the Edge in general is just the growth it gives the characters that you can't focus on in the movies because there isn't enough time. Big reason I love the series, everyone should go check it out if you have not already. What motivated you to start making YouTube videos? Again, to kind of answer this question already. I'm someone who enjoys being independent. The day that I can just do YouTube and all my other independent projects as a job is gonna be amazing. Plus it's always been my goal to kind of build a unique audience and I feel like this gives me the perfect opportunity to do that. What's your favorite season of Lost Tapes? Oh man, probably season two. The reason I say that is because I was looking at the episodes recently just to see what I have to work with in the near future. And I think season two has the biggest collection of episodes that I remember vividly from my childhood. It actually contains some genuinely terrifying moments. So I would go with season two. If you go blind, are you gonna get an eye patch? Cause that'd be pretty fucking awesome, not gonna lie. I actually do have an eye patch. It's not with me, it's in my car cause I use it to drive sometimes. Like I said, I have double vision. So sometimes reading road signs is really difficult. I tried experimenting with driving with an eye patch. Overall, I think I function better without it just because even though it's harder for me to read things, I have full range of my peripheral vision, which is a little important when you're driving. But um, I do own an eye patch and I do look pretty fucking cool in it. How's AJ the tire doing? I think you mean AJ and her tire. AJ is doing great and she's as fashionable as ever. As a side note, I did not go outside dressed like that, okay? Everyone freaked out when they saw me in that outfit. It was a cosplay. I was dressed as Mia Goth's character from the film X. That's why I put on the blue eyeshadow and the fake freckles and the bandana. I don't just dress like a porn star in my off hours, okay? And to finish all this off, I'm just gonna be addressing some comments that I see a lot on my channel. The first one being whether or not I'm gonna be making a new Dragon Prince video when the new season drops. And the answer is, I really have no fucking idea. <laughs> I feel like the Dragon Prince fandom just kind of doesn't like me at this point. I know there are some of my subscribers who love the Dragon Prince and who do like me, but every piece of media that I've released that covers the Dragon Prince so far in my YouTube career has been terribly received. Even my video last year when I was addressing the problems with the production of season four, where I was literally just stating facts. All of the top comments on that video are just people telling me I have no idea what I'm talking about. I do enjoy the show, so if season four is something to write home about, then yeah, I'll probably make a video about it. And revisit the Rayla cosplay because that was pretty cool, I'm not gonna lie. And lastly, and this is the most common question and comment that I get on all of my videos, yes, my outro music is from the game Wolf Quest. In my earlier videos, I used the outro music from some type of licensing website that I found. And obviously at the time I did not have the money to actually pay for the rights to use the song. So I just put it in my videos, which resulted in them getting copyright claimed occasionally. And the reason I picked that song in particular is because it reminded me of the Wolf Quest soundtrack which is a game I played all the time as a kid. And so after that song kept getting copyright claimed and I had to cut it down to where that wouldn't happen, I just went to go check out the actual Wolf Quest soundtrack and I saw that it wasn't copyrighted. And so I started using that as my outro music. It's probably gonna fuck me one day whenever they actually do copyright it, but until that day comes, I'm using it. So that's gonna be all for this video. Thank you to everyone who submitted a question. I know it wasn't anything that exciting, but hopefully I can get back to my regular stuff in the near future. Consider supporting me on Patreon because that computer I bought was expensive. Thank you to everyone for watching and I'll see you in the next video where I relive a portion of my childhood. We'll see how it goes. It's probably gonna end terribly.